you can literally follow the dietary protocol that was in this study that I'm about to talk about. I'm gonna just lay it out for you. You can literally follow this and try to get some of the same results that this study got when it came down to epigenetic aging. Okay, so this study that came out in Journal Aging 2021, brand new, took a look at just a robust amount of just lifestyle interventions, like basically crafted what they would consider like the perfect lifestyle to potentially kind of reverse aging. It's, it's fascinating. So anyhow, let's break it all down. Now, before we get into a lot of the nitty gritty of this, I have to explain epigenetics kind of just in a nutshell, because this is what really what this was looking at. Okay, we have our genes, we have our DNA, and we cannot change our DNA, okay? But what we can do is we can influence the expression of certain genes, and that's called like uh, epigenetics, right? We can, our lifestyle, our environment can influence how our genes express. So we can't change our physical DNA, but we can express components that we normally wouldn't express. We hypothetically might go through our entire life without ever expressing a certain set of genes that we had. We just never knew we had because they never got activated. And that's kind of the world of epigenetics. So lifestyle intervention can dramatically influence epigenetics and that can have a role in aging, can have a role in our fitness, it can have a role in our, just how we feel. So anyhow, let's get into this study. So this study broke down five pillars of lifestyle intervention. Okay, the first thing was their diet, probably the biggest piece. Okay, now here's what they had them do. Over the course of a week, they had them consume three servings of liver per week. Now I will link to the study down below if you want the full details. I'm just gonna kind of paraphrase. Three servings of liver per week. Five to 10 free range pasture raised eggs per week. Two cups of dark greens per week. Two cups of cruciferous vegetables per week. Six ounces at least of lean animal protein per week as well as two servings of low glycemic fruit, as well as a pretty liberal amount of olive oil and other monounsaturated fats. So it really sounds like a Mediterranean style protocol with a little bit of carbohydrates in there. So pretty close to a low carb ketogenic, but maybe not all the way. And then they also had methylation adaptogenic spices and things like that added in. I'll explain what that means in just a second. But basically they added things like sage, like rosemary, like turmeric. They had them consume green tea, oolong tea. There's a list of them. Again, the full study I can link out below. Pretty fascinating. Then they had them take certain supplements. Again, they had them take like over 20 various like seed uh, oils and extracts and veggie extracts, as well as lactobacillus plantarum two times a day, which is a specific kind of uh, probiotic strain. Then they had them exercise five times per week for 30 minutes at 60 to 80% of their max heart rate. So pretty high intensity. Then they had them try to get seven hours of sleep really just living a good lifestyle and practice healthy breathing patterns. So that fifth pillar was about breathing and really kind of activate that parasympathetic nervous system. They were really trying to model the ultimate sort of uh, Mediterranean relaxed lifestyle along with those dietary principles. The funny thing is, and I'm not tooting my own horn here, this is the stuff that I always talk about on my channel. It's flattering because it kind of feels like someone just watched a bunch of my videos and conducted a study. I know that's not the case, but it feels that way and it's pretty cool and I'm excited about it. So if we look at epigenetics, Think of it like this. Think about a giant room full of drawers, okay? Like, like a dresser drawers, right? You have a bunch of them and that's all your genetic code. You open a drawer, you've got a genetic code for X, Y, Z. You've got a genetic code here, right? Well, sometimes those drawers are locked and we can't open those drawers. So we can't access those genes. We can't express those genes. Sometimes those drawers are really flimsy. You open them and all the genes dump out and they mutate and they do the wrong thing. And sometimes they open seamlessly and you can activate them and do whatever. Okay, well that is all about methylation in a lot of ways. So when I mentioned the methylation adaptogens, methylation is when you have methyl groups that attach to DNA. Now this is a normal process, it normally happens but you can have what's called hypermethylation and you can have what's called hypomethylation. Hypermethylation is when you have too many methyl groups attaching and hypomethylation is when you have not, potentially not enough methyl groups attaching. Now, the whole methylation piece can vary widely depending on the type of gene, on the type of cell, like stem cells, totally different. So there's no saying it's necessarily good or bad, but the point is, is when you have hypermethylation, a lot of times it's like putting a lock on that drawer. So that hypermethylation means that the body, you can't really act, access that gene because the drawer's locked, okay? Hypomethylation a lot of times leads to instability. So maybe you can pull the drawer out, but it's flimsy and it falls all over the place and all the genes just spill out, right? And then you have potential mutation and all kinds of problems and abnormalities. So we can at least kind of conclude that 
you know, having a balance of the right methylation is good. And there was a guy named Dr. Horvath who really looked at this. And he found specifically, when you start looking at the methylation of what's called uh, CPG and some bunch of other things that are pretty complicated and over my head, but the bottom line is that he was very smart and I was able to figure out if you have a certain level of hypo or hypermethylation on the CGC group, it can give you what is called an epigenetic age. Long story short, you were able to look at this overall lifestyle and say, yes, this is going to reverse this epigenetic clock. Or yes, this is going to advance that epigenetic clock by looking at the methyl group. So this study was all about that, right? Remember those methylation adaptogens that I talked about, how they added those to the diet? Well, this whole study was all about that. It was like, if we take Horvath's calculation, if we combine all the things that we know are good, or good for healthy aging, what kind of result will we get from epigenetics? We know we can't change our DNA, but we can at least measure, at least kind of theoretically, this epigenetic clock. So again, we're following largely a Mediterranean lifestyle. And I wanna give a thoughtful nod to a sponsor here, speaking of Mediterranean lifestyle, called ButcherBox, because yes, these videos are made possible by awesome sponsors. So I want you to check out ButcherBox down below in the description. So if you wanted to try any of the stuff that's in this study, I would recommend that you use them for your animal protein. So if it's gonna be lean protein, if it's gonna be grass-fed, grass-finished beef, whatever you wanna use, they are an online place to get really high quality meat. So if you wanna get, again, grass-fed, grass-finished meat, or really good quality, Quality chicken or anything like that gets delivered to your doorstep. So I went ahead and I put a link down below. You can check ButcherBox out and a big thank you to ButcherBox for the continued support. So if you're eating meat, you don't want to go to the grocery store, you want to potentially save some cash, I would highly recommend you check them out. So let's talk results of this whole lifestyle thing. Remember the diet, the supplementation, the exercise, the breathing, the sleep, you name it, right? The results were fascinating. So this study, mind you, took a look at uh, 44 people total, okay? They analyzed, I believe, 18 in one group. But long story short, it's a pretty large group, okay? And here's what the results were in terms of epigenetic clock. They found that when they followed this lifestyle, in just eight weeks, they were able to reverse their epigenetic age two years. So there is a reverse in aging. Now, I'm careful to say that. This is what the study says, not me specifically. I'm careful to say that. But the point is, is when you look at the epigenetic clock using Horvath's calculation, it's pretty fascinating. So just for eight weeks of living this Mediterranean style with what I've mentioned, you get this powerful effect, which is fascinating. Now, it's not the first study to talk about Horvath's kind of calculations and utilize this epigenetic clock. Okay, there are multiple studies that have done this before. And there's been studies that have been done in the pharmacology world too, that are pretty interesting, that look at the same thing, and I'll explain them in a second. But none have really looked at this full, all-encompassing lifestyle. Because usually studies are looking at very independent, isolated components that we have to piece together to ultimately build a lifestyle. Like I say, spicy foods are good because they do X, or this exercise is good because it does X. But when you actually combine them, do they potentially counteract each other? See, we don't really know because most people, most studies aren't looking at the holistic kind of intervention. This one did, okay? Now, that being said, they have a potential reversal on aging here, but let's take a look at a study that was published in the journal Aging Cell. This one was interesting because it took a look at 10 subjects and it did more of a pharmaceutical intervention. So it gave them human growth hormone, it gave them metformin, uh, dehydroepiandosterone, so DHEA, along with vitamin D3 and along with zinc. Okay, and this one was for 12 months, for a year. And after a year of this intervention, they had a reversal of their epigenetic age by a year and a half. So they still had a reversal in aging, but it was you know, a lot more pharmaceutical intervention. However, really no hard work. It was much more just kind of implemented. So the point is, ground is being covered. Epigenetics is not like a woo-woo witch doctor, which is what I always say, weird stuff. Like it's actually being looked at in the pharma world too. Then there was a study that was published in the journal Gero Science that looked at the Mediterranean diet. It took a look at six women. They had them eat a mostly a Mediterranean style diet plus 400 IUs of vitamin D3 per day. And they had them do this for a year and they ended up having a 1.47 year reversal in their epigenetic clock. So there's things that you can do, but none that have really looked at this big picture. So again, I linked out to the study down below. I also linked out to ButcherBox if you wanna get some food, if you wanna try this yourself, right? It's pretty interesting stuff. The bottom line is lifestyle matters when it comes down to how we age and how we feel. And these studies are starting to look at it and we just have to understand epigenetics, which I only know about that much out of this much. So anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.